Hi, welcome to unit four, where we first begin learning how to apply derivatives. This is kind of a long process, unit four and unit five, we really discuss the application of derivatives. We begin with the first and second derivative, which helps us understand the relationship between PVA, position velocity and acceleration. And we also end up applying these concepts to related rates and optimization. So this is really the application of derivatives. Um, we start with unit four, but it kind of continues on. So first we're gonna start with what we call the first derivative test. Um, we will be applying derivatives to analyze the properties of functions, but specifically today, you're going to apply the first derivative to understand information about the function and its graph and to identify key features uh, and uh, relate them to graphical, numerical, and analytical representations. So a little bit of review from pre-cal. We have to talk about extrema, which again are our maxes and mins, but this time we're going to add in the fact that your maxes and mins don't necessarily have to be that mountain or valley, but it can actually be the highest point and lowest point, which could occur at an end point. And we're going to also talk about increasing, decreasing. And just a reminder, we read our graphs from left to right. So when you say an increasing function, you're moving your, your hand from left to right. So make sure you recognize that when you increase, decrease, your hands are going from left to right or whatever left to right is for you. So here is kind of a little preview. I've got this cubic function, x cubed plus 6x squared minus 15x. So just a reminder about extrema and increasing, decreasing. There was a relative max right here. And why is this considered a relative max and this considered a relative min? Because technically, let me get my pen back up. Technically, this would be the absolute max, and down here would be the absolute min, because these would be our highest and lowest points. Okay, But where is my interval increasing? And so this, for this, I would say it's easiest enough to say as x goes to the right, okay, well, most of my functions are going to go to the right because I read my graphs from left to right. So as x goes to the right, what is my function doing? If it's going up, then that means it's increasing. Okay, so where does it go up until? About there. So that's the first interval that I'm increasing from negative infinity until uh, negative 5. Then I see as I go to the right, what am I doing? Well, now my function is going down. So that means it must be decreasing, and it decreases all the way until 1. So there's my interval where I am decreasing. And my final interval for increasing, you can see as I move to the right, my function goes back up. So that means it is also increasing, but this is increasing now from 1 to infinity. But what happens if I zoom in? What happens to those maxes and mins? Look at that. We still have some maxes, we still have some mins, but are they the same? We still have a max point right here. We still have a min point right here, but what changed about their language? Well, their language changed that we now have relative and absolutes. This was still a relative max, just like in the previous example, and this is still the absolute max, just like in the previous example. But once I zoomed in, this point no longer is the relative min, it is now the absolute min. It is the lowest point on my graph, because if I test this endpoint, it is not lower. So that means this must be my absolute max. This could potentially be a relative minimum. So it, the same thing you'd ask yourself, where is my interval increasing? Well, it's increasing as I move to the right here, I'm going up. So it must be increasing until that point, which is a negative five. Then it's decreasing until one, then it's increasing again. So now my increasing interval has changed. It's no longer from negative infinity to negative five because I am doing a specific closed interval. So it is from negative seven to negative five. And over here, it's also increasing from 1 to 7. Again, no longer to infinity because we're doing a specific closed interval. So how do I actually apply the first derivative test? Well, here's my definition, some formal definition and some, some information. But really what we're getting into is the nitty-gritty right here. The first derivative test helps you identify extrema. It helps you identify increasing, decreasing intervals. And a new vocab word today, it helps you recognize the critical point. So what is a critical point? A critical point is a point where f prime, your derivative, has to equal zero or f prime is undefined, so probably not differentiable at that point. This uh, little bit, a little handy bit of note, the sign of the derivative must stay the same between the two consecutive critical points. And this comes into play when we use our sign chart. And if you recall sign charts from pre-cal, they look like a number line. Okay, definition of a critical point one more time. So how do we actually test for it? The first thing you're going to have to do is take that derivative. Then you identify your critical points, which again are where your slope is zero or undefined. So you can look at the graph itself and see if there's a zero slope or an undefined slope. 
or you can take the derivative and set it equal to zero and determine your critical points from there. You use a sign chart to analyze increasing and decreasing. And this is the formal definition of the, si the, sorry, the first derivative test, which tells me if my derivative is greater than zero. And what does greater than zero mean? Well, greater than zero numbers are above the x-axis, so that means they are positive values. So my y values are all positive. I am physically above the x-axis. So again, when I say that my derivative is positive, I'm specifically speaking about the y values. So please don't get your graph confused and look at, okay, well, x, your uh, quadrants two and three and say, well, those can't be positive because my x value is negative. Well, we're not talking about the x value. We're talking about the y value, f prime of x. So Make sure you recognize quadrants one and two above the x-axis is what we're talking about. So if your derivative is above the x-axis, if it's positive, then your original function must have been increasing. And vice versa, if your derivative is negative, your function must have been decreasing. You can now identify true extreme points instead of just the critical points. You can see if a function goes from increasing to decreasing, then it must have been a max. If it goes from decreasing to increasing, then it must have been a min. But if it goes from increasing to increasing, Nothing. Decreasing, decreasing, nothing. So, or at least nothing so far. So let's relate that information. What did I just tell you? It's a lot of information, right? How about a visual? So here I have the graph of f of x, the original function. It's cubic, as you can see. And its derivative is quadratic. Well, doesn't that make sense? If I have a cubic, if I knock it down a peg, it better be a quadratic. So its derivative should be the quadratic form. But let's look at those. Do I have any extrema points I want to identify? Well, of course, we have our endpoints, but I'm just zoomed in on this. You can see that my domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. So there cannot be a max or min at those endpoints because they're infinite. So that's not a real value. So the only max and mins I have are right here. I have a max at x equals negative 5. Well, if I'm looking at my, my function, what's happening on the derivative? Look at that. There's something going on at negative 5. What something is that? There is a 0. There is a root. There is an x-intercept. So that's our critical point. That's where f prime of x, the derivative, is equal to 0. And look at that. There's proof. It is equal to 0. We literally call that a 0 point. So what about my other one? Oh, I guess I put my animations in a little differently. So if I look at what's happening on my original function, I can see as I come up, I've got an increasing function going to a decreasing function. So a max. But what does that mean on my derivative side? Look at that. I have above the x-axis to below the x-axis, a max. Now let's look at the other point. We have a min at x equals 1. Well, let's look at our derivative. You have a zero point at x equals one. That means that's a critical point. You could also have an undefined point, which is a non-differentiable point on the function or uh, something, some sort of discontinuity or funkiness happening on your derivative. So you have this min, you have this zero point. Well, let's look at what's happening with the increasing decreasing. We're going from decreasing to increasing, a clear minimum, but I'm going from below the graph x-axis to above the x-axis, going from negative values to positive, a minimum again. So there's proof of what it looks like on your function and what it looks like on your derivative. But now let's actually see those increasing intervals by themselves. So we know that it's increasing from negative infinity to negative 5. You can clearly see that the graph is going up. But what does that mirror on the derivative? Look at that. Aren't those values Aren't those values all above the x-axis? Every single point on that function before I hit negative 5 is above the x-axis. So let's look at our next interval. Here we have a decreasing interval from negative 5 to 1. Well, what do you guess is going to happen on the derivative? If the increasing interval was above the x-axis, the decreasing interval is below. And look at that. I'm going from negative 5 to 1, and all of my values are below the x-axis. And finally, we have another increasing interval on the left, and it goes from negative 1 to 0. So what do you predict is going to happen in your derivative? And if you guess that it's above the x-axis, you're right. Good job. So just one more time to show you physically to actually define. And so you can see, compare, increasing above the x-axis, decreasing below the x-axis, increasing above the x-axis. And for those arrows, ah, 
And for those arrows, a max was a zero point, a min was a zero point, but a max specifically went from above to below the x-axis. A min specifically went from below to above the x-axis. So let's actually solve an example here. We're given the graph, oh, should probably get that graph, but we're given this graph of f prime on the open interval from negative infinity to positive infinity, so all real numbers. And we're shown the graph of f prime. We're asked to find the critical values, find where the intervals of f are increasing or decreasing, and then identify what the extrema actually are. And if you can, identify whether it's a relative or absolute. So where's my graph? Here's my graph. Okay. So the first thing we had to do was figure out our critical values. So what would be critical values? Well, I lied. The first thing I'm not going to do is critical values. The first thing I'm going to do is reread my question. Why am I emphasizing that? Because on questions like this, you have to double check. Are you given the function or are you given the derivative? And next time we're going to learn about the second derivative. So then you got to check, are you given the function, the derivative, or the second derivative? And it's so important to reread that question. So I'm going to reread this question again. Given the graph of Whoa, it's the derivative we're doing. So that means I have to think of everything in terms of the derivative going back to the function. So that means I need to know that in my derivative, any zero points are considered my critical points, but these are my maxes and mins, possibly, potentially, possibly. I have to test them, okay? I would know that above the x-axis is an increasing. I would know that below the x-axis is a decreasing. And then I would have to actually test the max and min. So that's why it's important to reread that question. What do you have? F prime. What do you know about F prime that relates back to the function? That's what you have to ask yourself. So it's asking first for critical values. So critical values, again, are my zero points. So I have a zero point at x equals, what is that, negative 4, at x equals negative 2, at 1, at 3, and at 5. Then the next thing it wanted to know is where was it increasing? Well, it's increasing anytime I see the derivative above the x-axis. So that's from negative 4 to negative 2, from 1 to 3, and then from 5 to infinity. And I know I can go to infinity because I can check the original domain they gave me. Then it also wanted to know where is it decreasing. That's going to be below the axis. So that's from negative infinity to negative 4, from negative 2 to 1 and from 3 to 5. Okay, and technically there's little u's in between all of these little unions join. And the third and final question, it said, what are the actual extrema? And I can't look at this function or derivative graph and say, okay, it's where I see a mountain in a valley because this is the derivative. I have to look at where it goes from above to below and below to above. Remember, below to above, a decrease to an increase is a minimum. Above to below is a maximum. So I check each point. At negative 4, what's happening on the graph? At negative 4, it's going from below to above. So at negative 4, there is a min. We're going to do our max list over here. Then I have, I have to check at negative 2. It's going from above to below, so it's a max. At 1, I'm going from below to above, so it's a min. And at... Three, I'm going from above to below, max. Four, I'm going from below to above. So min. So these are my x values. And make sure you write them as correctly as you can. And so that's the information that it asked. That's the information I gave. All right. And just a little wrap up. You can check your work right there. Now we have another example. We're given the graph of the function. And we, have, we know it's a semicircle and three line segments. The interval is from negative 5 to 4, where the first question asks us, which interval is f prime less than 0? So first thing I'd have to do is figure out which interval is less, where f prime is less than 0. Wrong. First thing I do is reread the question because I need to identify what this graph is. Well, the graph of the function, it's f, so I have to think in terms of f. So if I know f and I'm going to f prime, then I know an increasing function is where f prime is greater than zero. I know a decreasing function is where f prime is less than zero. Remember, this means above the x-axis and below the x-axis. I know that a max or a min could translate to f prime equaling zero or f prime being undefined. And that's about the information I know. Um, I know I could identify 
a specific max or min using the information I know about um, increasing, decreasing, and decreasing, increasing. So now that I took the moment to think about what I know about the function relating back to the or forward to the derivative, then that helps me. So this is asking for f prime less than zero. That means it's asking for where is it decreasing? So where is it decreasing? And I look at my graph, and it looks like it's decreasing in three spots, actually. So it looks like it's decreasing. Right here, it's obviously increasing. It's going up. But it's decreasing from negative 3 to 0. And even though this is a semicircle, you can notice, look, it is still decreasing. It only begins increasing right here. And then it decreases again. So how would I write that? I would say I might have a decreasing interval from negative 3 to 0 and from 0 to 1 and from 2 to 4. Those would be my decreasing intervals. Now it's asking me for f prime greater than 0. So do you think we're looking for increasing intervals? Yes, we are. So I know that's from negative 5 to negative 3, and I also know it was from 1 to 2. This one asks us to find values of x where f prime is equal to 0 or undefined. And what do we know those are called? Those are called our critical values. Those are our points. And we know that those are related to maxes and mins or undefined points. Maxes and mins would be f prime equaling 0. But an undefined would be a non-differentiable point. Do I have any of those things occurring on this graph? In fact, I actually do. So if I truck along and I look, I know that... Right here, okay, cool, we're cool, we're cool, we're cool, we're cool, boom. What happens right there? Okay, well, that's not, I mean, it's kind of a max. I mean, it is a max, but the reality of it is, is that's not a max where f prime would equal zero. What is that? That's a corner, which is a non-differentiable point, which is an undefined point on my derivative. Now I go along again, and here we have a little corner or cusp, or cusp meets a corner, or whatever you want to call that. But there's a corner right here again, so that means you have another undefined point. Would you call this an undefined point? If you did, you got it right. But now I need to check if there are any mins or maxes. Anything would, would look like a mountain or a peak. Look at that semicircle. Do you, or sorry, a mountain or a valley. Do you have a valley happening right here? Yes. So that means there must be a horizontal tangent line occurring. I'll draw that on for you. At this point, if I selected one point and I attached to it, there is a horizontal tangent line occurring right here, which means that your derivative is equal to zero at that point. So if I were to answer this question, I would know that the x values where I have, oops, let's put white back on so y'all can see it a little better. The x values where I have critical points were at negative 3, 0, 1, and 2. Finally, it wants me to sketch that graph. Well, sketching that graph would involve uh, putting my important points on the graph. So negative 5, since that's my endpoint. 4, since that's my endpoint. Negative 3 seems important to graph. 0 seems important to graph. 1 and 2. Those all seem like important points because they're critical points. Um, or they're because they're critical points. <laughs> so then I figure out what this would be doing. Okay, well, if this is the function, if it's increasing, then this graph has to be above the x-axis. If it's decreasing, then this graph has to be below the x-axis. So here's my y. Okay, so between negative 5 and negative 3, I'm increasing. So that means I must be above the x-axis, but I'm going to below the x-axis because from negative 3 to 0, I am um, decreasing, so below the x-axis. So probably something like this. I can't guarantee exactly what this looks like just yet, but potentially it could look something like this. Go below the x-axis. And then at 0, I check again. 0 to 1, what's it doing? Well, it's decreasing. Well, that means I have to go back to below the x-axis, come back to my 0 point, and then, oh, I actually did this incorrect. My bad. Let's check that one more time. Before I start drawing my lines, I have to figure out what's happening at these critical points. So at this critical point, there's some sort of discontinuity. So I should do that. At zero, again, there's a discontinuity. So potentially there's like an asymptote or a cusp or a corner or something funky happening at those points. At one, I have a true zero point. So this is where I would actually hit the graph. And at two, I have something funky happening again. So here we go. Now I can go above the x-axis. So 
I don't know, maybe it's doing this, who knows. Then below the x-axis, probably doing something like that. Below the x-axis, but I'm going to connect. And then we're going to go above the x-axis. So it might do something like that. And then below the x-axis again. I don't know. Something like that. Some sort of funkiness. Here we have example three. The graph of the function g prime shown below, blah, 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 blah. So I could start by figuring out where G is increasing, or I could start by rereading my question. What was I given? I was given the derivative. So if I was given the derivative, again, I asked myself, if G prime's going to G, what do I know? At this point, I believe you could do this example. So I'm hoping you do this example on your own. Question one asks for where G is increasing. Again, this is the graph of G prime. Question two asks for where G is decreasing. Question three says, where is g prime equal to zero or undefined? And finally, sketch the original graph of g. I have a table for us as well. And again, I want you to try this on your own. Could you solve these tables? So here's question one, question two, three. Oh, there's only three questions. So then I have some release problems, which are part of your pink packet. And on a separate video, I will happily go through and answer all of those questions, including example three and example four. But to finish up, to wrap up some closure, remember you're going to take the derivative. To identify your critical points, you set your derivative equal to zero or look for a non-differentiable point. Or on the function, you look for where the slope is zero or the slope is undefined. You use your sign chart to analyze increasing, decreasing. Oh, I kind of forgot to show that. I'll show that on the next video with the release problems. So use the sign chart to analyze increasing, decreasing. Find your extremum points, and that's it. How would we, oh, how would we tie this into the second derivative? So we would use the same information, but my second derivative is actually going to help me identify concavity. So that's what you can look forward to next time. I'll see you all in class.